morning, Jam and Jellies. Thank you so much for joining us here at the Aquarium of the Pacific for another one of our Aquarium Online Academy programs. Today we are going to be practicing our alphabet, which will be a lot of fun. We'll be practicing our sounds, our letters, through learning about different animals, things that make them special. So a super exciting program for our summer kids club that we are having this week. Um, if today during the program you have any questions, any observations that you want to share with us, we do have a live text line that you can use. That number right now will appear on the screen. Um, and that number is 562 two eight six one eight three eight so this is where you can send in your live thoughts your live questions like that i can answer your questions and talk about the things that you're interested in um, but if you are watching this program after it airs live, after August 2nd, after about 9.30 a.m., that's still fine. You can still send in your questions and observations. But instead of using this live text line, you're going to want to use this email. This email is live at lbaop.org. Um, this just helps us ensure that we can get back to your observations, back to your questions in a timely manner since we aren't always at this text line. So if you're watching after it airs live, you'll want to use this email. But if you're watching with me this morning live here, you'll want to use this text sign right here. And I would love to hear from all of you. Um, so like I mentioned, today we are going to be practicing our alphabet. Um, so I do have a whiteboard and some markers with me just because I'm going to be writing out the letters, writing out the different animals that we're learning about today. So if you want to join in with me and do that, um, feel free to go grab a piece of paper, a pencil. If you just want to watch, that's fine. If you just want to make observations, that's fine. Whatever is the best way for you to learn is definitely what we want to make sure that you are doing. To start off though, we're going to start off from the beginning of the alphabet. So what does the alphabet start with? Hmm. Let's see, are you ready to make your alphabet pose? I'm gonna be making poses today as morning stretches too. We're starting off with the letter A. So let's see what animal we're going to be learning about today with the letter A. Ooh, there's many animals in here. So what animal out of all of these starts with the letter A? Is it this one? No, that's a C star. What does C star start with? It starts with an S. <laughs> and we just saw the fish. Is it the fish? Does the fish start with the letter A? <sighs> no, Cynthia, that's the letter F. What about this animal? Does anybody know what this animal is? Let's ignore the beginning word, which is C in their name. <laughs> it's an anemone. So we're looking at anemones today. So that starts with the letter A. What sound does the letter A make? Uh, uh, uh. Anemone. So let's go ahead and write that. And then right now we can start to make some observations about our anemones. So we have our letter A. And I'm going to do a capital A and a lowercase a. I'm going to put equals anemone. And if you need to pause to write this, don't worry. You can just pause and then unpause once you're ready. I will still be here. I'm just going to underline the letter A for our first letter. Anemone. Let me just fix this lighting really quick for all of us. I think that's a little better. But here we go. So anemone. Let's go back and see what observations we can make about our anemones now. That we know what they're called, that they start with the letter A. So I want to give you just a couple of seconds for you to think. What do you notice about it? Did you know that was an anemone to begin with? Did you know it was an animal? So you can think. You can think out loud. Talk out loud if you're watching this with someone. I like to talk to myself too. So if you just want to think out loud. If you have a dog, a cat, a plant, you can talk to them. But what are some observations you can make? You can also talk to us. You can send in those thoughts to that live text line that we have on the screen. So one thing I always really notice about our anemones, especially in this video that we're watching, this is just so you know, this video that we're watching is of our anemones that live here at the aquarium. 
But one thing I love about this video is they're kind of just going crazy, right? Their little tentacles and everything are swinging around. And that's because of the filter that we have in here. So it makes all their little tentacles move around and flow all over the place. Looking at the anemone and the way that they move, do you think that they're soft and squishy or do you think they're hard like a rock? Hmm, let's see. They're going to be soft and squishy. That's why they're moving everywhere. They're very flexible. Their bodies are really squishy. However, right here, you'll notice that they're stuck onto the rock. So they have a really sticky foot is what you call it. And that really sticky foot, which is on the bottom, um, is able to stick onto different surfaces. So they're able to stick onto rocks and different things out in the ocean. Because, like we mentioned, they're really soft and flexible. So if a wave were to come, it would take them. But since they have that nice sticky foot, they're able to just grab on to things and i've mentioned these things kind of swinging everywhere these are tentacles hmm one thing that i feel a lot of people know about anemones is that they can sting so they can sting with those tentacles however if you've ever visited us here at the aquarium or maybe you've visited somewhere else or maybe you've read about anemones um is that we can actually touch some anemones not all anemones but some anemones because their sting is really weak and our skin is really strong which is really cool another way that you might know about anemones is if you've ever watched a very specific movie that's known as finding nemo nemo lives in the anemones and a lot of fish will actually be living in the anemones how is it that they live in there though if i just mentioned to you that they stink so they have a very very cool adaptation have you ever heard that word before? Adaptation. That's another really great word that starts with the letter A. So you practice saying it with me. Adaptation. So what that word means is I think about it. It's like something really special an animal has that helps it survive. It helps it be healthy and happy. So these fish have the special adaptation that their bodies are actually covered in mucus. So let's say don't actually do it but let's say you were to blow your nose into your hand right now and you'd have a boogery hand right and you were to rub it on your forehead and you kept doing that all day long you'd eventually be covered all in boogers right be kind of gross but that's what the fish do they cover themselves in their boogers and their mucus and then they're able to swim in the anemone they're able to live in there because those boogers are super super strong that the anemone can't sting them through their mucus layer so that's how they're able to live inside of there and i know kind of gross i think it's pretty cool though because a lot of animals will use their boogers and their mucus in lots of different ways so that's one way that they're able to make homes out of anemones so that gives you an idea as to why anemones are important out in the ocean they're providing homes for animals some animals also like to eat anemones so lots of different things that go on with these very special animals so let's go ahead and say goodbye to our anemones because we're going to move on to our next animal today so what letter comes after the letter a, you can show me with your pose. I'm trying to figure out what way I have to go with my pose. So our next letter, I was going the wrong way, is our letter B. So let's see what animal we're seeing with our letter B today. <gasps> so this is our blue-throated macaw, Benny. So we have a double B. So blue-throated macaw, Benny. So what sound does the letter B make? Bah, bah, bah. So Benny is a super awesome bird who we will talk about in a second, but I want to make sure that we continue writing our letters. So here we go. So again, capital B, lowercase b, and Benny is a blue-throated macaw. And if you want, you can also write his name. But you don't have to remember his name if you don't want to. Here we go. And I'm going to underline the B again. Here we go. So our letter B is this blue-throated macaw, which goes ba ba ba. Do it with me. Ba 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 ba. Yeah, I think you're ready to learn about Benny, huh? Um, so <laughs> let's go back to Benny. So you might be wondering. Why does Benny even live here at the aquarium, right? Like, 
Hmm, aquarium usually means fish and underwater animals, sharks and all that. But we also have other very special animals that live here at the aquarium. Benny is actually part of our animal ambassador program. So there are different animals from Benny, who is a blue throated macaw, to snakes, to tortoises, to a sulfur crested cockatoo that we have here that live here at the aquarium so like that we can learn more about them and teach all of you more about them benny is really special because he's actually an endemic species what that is it's a really fancy way of saying that you can only find this type of bird these blue throated macaws in one place in the entire world and that's actually bolivia so another great b word bolivia so they live in Bolivia and they live in these groves, which are nice and high up and mostly away from people. And these groves have existed for 500 and more years. And these blue throated macaws live there. Um, so scientists are still learning more about them. They don't know exactly where they live within those groves. They just know that they live in those groves. And these blue throated macaws um, have been living there for thousands of years, which is really, really cool. Um, so we have Benny here so we can learn more about them because Benny is also known as an animal that is endangered. Um, so even though the, these birds live really far up, people still try and get these birds to be their pets or different things like that. Um, so we're learning more about animals like Benny so like that we can hopefully help their species out a little bit more out in their natural habitats. And there's lots of ways that we're able to learn more about them, which are very cool. Um, so here in this picture, um, you can see here's Benny. This is also our aviculturist. Her name is Amanda Bueno, another B. Um, but Benny here, you can see he's getting weighed. So if you look right here, look really closely, it seems like Pen Benny is almost 11 pounds, if that is it in kilograms. It might be in kilograms. But let's just say it's a 10.95. He might almost be 11 pounds. You can see how big he is, though, in this picture, too. So we're able to weigh him. We're able to check out his body see if his wings are really nice and healthy see if his nice little mouth is nice as too as well as his claws and really just check out his body make sure he's healthy and we're also able to train with him in different ways benny is a very very smart bird um he lives in our barn that we have here at the aquarium which also might be surprising. We do have a barn is what we call it, where all these different little um, birds, bigger birds, all those snakes I mentioned live. Um, so he lives in there and that's where a lot of his training will take place. Um, I used to go back there quite frequently because I used to volunteer with our birds here at the aquarium, our lorikeets. But oftentimes Benny would be back there and Benny likes attention. He sticks his little claw of his little home and he wants you to come by and put your finger there so he can say hello. He also knows how to paint, which I always thought was really cool. If you've never heard about a bird painting is he's able to grab onto the brush either with his arms or even his beak and then he's able to paint a picture um we're able to give him newspapers and he'll rip them up he's a very smart bird sometimes he'll even come out and meet the public here at the aquarium um so it's a very cool opportunity to be able to see an animal who we normally would never see right unless you were to go to bolivia um you would see one of these blue throated macaws but he lives here at the aquarium, so he's part of that special program where we can teach all of you more about him. So maybe one day when you come, if you ever get the chance to, you'll get to learn a little bit more about Benny. Um, or maybe even meet him if he's out when you are here. But we're going to say goodbye, bye, let's see, be another B, bye, to Benny. And <laughs> let's see what our next letter is going to be. It's also the beginning of my name, if you remember my name. I don't think I told you my name, huh? My name's Cynthia in case you're wondering um but we're going to be doing the letter c so what sound does the letter c make <coughs> let's see what animal we're learning about the big reveal the big reveal there we go we have a crab so what sound does the word crab make again <coughs> what letter does it start with C. Okay, so let's go ahead and write this down on our notes we've been taking with our different letters so we can keep track of them. So here we go, the letter C, capital and lowercase. And we're going to be looking at a few different crabs. So we'll just write crab to keep it really nice and broad. There we go. 
the letter C for crab. Okay, so far we have the letter A with anemone, which the letter A made the word, the sound ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. We have the letter B with our blue throated macaw, Benny, which made the sound ba, ba, ba. And now we're on our letter C with our crabs, which makes the sound k, k, k. What do you know about crabs? So there's a couple of different crabs that live here at the aquarium, but I would love to know what you already know about them. Um, we have all different types of crabs here, like I mentioned. This is one of my favorite, favorite videos we have of our crabs so that live here. I'm going to give you a second for you to just make some observations on everything on this crab, and then I'll tell you why it's my favorite. So what were you able to notice about the crab? You might have even figured out why it's my favorite. Maybe it made you laugh. Is that these crabs like to carry things. You'll never guess what the name is. It's a carrier crab. Um, so um, they like to carry different things. So they like to carry different things in order to hide because they're not too big. So you can see it's carrying this little piece of kelp here. Is it doing a good job at hiding? Was it hard for you to spot where the crab was in this video? If it was hard, I don't know what to tell you because it's not doing a very good job of playing hide and seek. I think this crab might be the worst hide and seek player because it's definitely not hiding from anything. Fortunately, this crab lives here at the aquarium, so it doesn't have to be very good at what it does. Um, so it doesn't have to worry about anything trying to eat it or anything like that. But you can see it's putting its best effort. Another reason I really like this crab is because you can see its shell and also all of the different textures that its shell has. Why is a shell important to a crab? Why do you think it is? How can a shell help them? Do you think that the body that's inside of the shell is really hard or do you think it's really soft on the inside of a crab? I know this might be weird to bring up because we're looking at a crab right now and talking about a crab, but have you ever ate crab before? When you eat crab, is it like eating a bone or is it really soft? It's really soft. If you haven't eaten crab before, crab is very soft. It's also pretty yummy. But, um, so inside it's really soft. So if this shell on the outside is hard, how does that help them? It helps protect them, right? So it helps protect that nice soft body. So like that, not just any animal can come and eat them. It would have to be nice animals with nice, well, I don't know if nice animals. It would have to be animals with nice strong teeth and strong enough jaws to be able to munch on them and be able to eat them and do all those different things and break in through that shell. But for a lot of animals, they don't have strong jaws, so this nice shell can protect them from the outside world. I will let you know, just like we grow, and just like other animals grow, um, crabs will grow as well. But when they grow, they actually will have to come out of their shell and create a whole new shell. And that's known as molting. So when they do that, it's like if they're getting naked. They come out of their shell and then they were super, super soft. And then during that time, they're like, oh no, that's when anything can eat them. So they'll find somewhere to hide until that new shell grows back. Um, and then they're able to come on out. But they'll have to do that periodically throughout their lives because eventually the shell that they're in just gets too small and they're like, let me out. So then that's when they'll get out and they'll grow that shell. Um, and that process is pretty cool to see. Oh, here we have one of our other crabs. This is our Japanese spider crab. Um, so these crabs are personally one of my favorites because they're a crab that can live by the surface of the water, but they're also a crab that can live down in the deep sea. Look at how big they are. Um, so they can get fairly large in size and you can find them down in the deep sea. They like hanging out in the deep sea because these crabs really like to eat dead animals and they also like to eat poop. Um, so there's a lot of poop down in the deep sea since everything sprinkles on down. So you can find them there and you can find them in areas of Japan. So a little bit of warmer water, but as you know, or as you might know, um, the deep sea isn't very warm, is it? 
if it's not. So these crabs can also withstand temperatures like that. So there's crabs that will live in their shells, they'll explore different parts of the ocean. There's also other crabs, like one of my other favorite crabs, you'll learn I have a lot of favorite animals, friends, are like hermit crabs. So we were just talking about how some shells, how some um, crabs will come out of that shell and grow a new shell. But hermit crabs are a little bit different, right? So you can see in the picture and right here as well. So hermit crabs will find a nice shell on the beach and then they'll be like, hmm, I'm a little bit too big. So they'll come out of their shell and look, like I said, they turn naked and it's like, hmm, let me go and find a new shell that fits me. And then they'll find a new shell that's big enough for them and then they'll go back in there. I don't know if this was supposed to come off, friends. Um, but, oh, okay, I'm getting the approval that it was supposed to come off, so it's okay. Um, but then they'll find another shell. I actually just learned what I thought, which I thought was really fascinating, is a lot of these different hermit crabs will actually line up a lot of times from the smallest hermit crab to the largest hermit crabs. And then they'll make like a little shell exchange line so the smallest one will take off its shell the second one too the third one too the fourth one too and then they'll scoot on down and take that new shell that the other person had not the other person that the other crab had and then from there the biggest crab however this was my question after i watched the video there was no one for the biggest crab to switch shells with so then the biggest crab will have to go and find its brand new shell um, and then from there, it will find its brand new shell and everyone will now have a nice shell that they fit into. So that's why if you ever go to the beach or to the ocean, it's important to not take the shells because a lot of times animals will need those shells to live inside and to protect themselves. And a lot of the times there's already little tiny animals living in those shells that we can't even see. So shells are really, really important to lots of different animals, but especially to animals like crabs. Um, and I think crabs are super, super cute. Um, as you can see, the wide range that there are of them. But we'll go ahead and say goodbye to our crabs. So like that, we can go ahead and do another letter. So our next letter after the letter C, what is it? It's the letter D. So show me your pose. We're doing the letter D. What sound does the letter D make? Duh, duh, duh. So let's see what animal we're learning about with the letter D. The big reveal. The big reveal. Here we go. What animal is this? Are you jumping with joy just like our dolphin? So what sound does it make? Duh, 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 dolphin. So let's see. And let's go ahead and write our letter. And right now we'll talk more about our dolphins. So here we go. D equals dolphin. Here we go, dolphin. Our letter D. So our dolphins, we don't have any dolphins that live here at the aquarium, but we do work with a boat company and we'll go on out on their boat. And that's how we're able to see all of these different dolphins um, that live here nearby or that will be here during certain times of the year. Or maybe we also just have pictures of dolphins that don't come here, but that's fine. But here you can see these are some dolphins. These are common dolphins. So they're pretty common here. <laughs> um, I hope some of my jokes are making you laugh, friends, but it's okay. Um, so we have our common dolphins here. So what do you notice about these dolphins? What do you know about dolphins? So to start off, where are these dolphins hanging out? Are they inside or outside the water? They're outside the water, right? So they're jumping out of the water, which gives you a really good view of their colors, of their fins. I remember my first time seeing dolphins is when I started working here. And I went out on the whale watching boat because I was getting um, trained to go out and work. And I remember seeing my first dolphin in person. And I was so surprised as to how big they are. They can get to be around five feet. So I don't know how tall you are. 
and you can't really see my legs. But a dolphin to me would reach me probably around here. But there's certain dolphins, um, other species that can get to be even bigger than me. I think it's kind of cool thinking about how dolphins can be bigger than you or how other animals can be bigger than you. And dolphins are one of those. Um, so lots of different sizes that they'll range through and also lots of different colors the ones we are looking at had that cream grayish color there's other dolphins that will just be more of a solid gray color like the bottlenose dolphins growing up this used to be the dolphin i always imagined when um i were to think of dolphins this is the dolphin i would always see in movies this is the type of dolphin i would always see in books and everything so maybe when i say dolphin this is what you imagine i definitely do understand that and they are very very cool they are a little bit larger than those first dolphins we were seeing they can measure around eight feet sometimes even a little bit bigger um but you can see all these different fins that they have so their top fins their side fins their tails and here you can see their little blue hole so why do dolphins have to come out of the waters friends what do we have in common with dolphins have you ever thought about that question is hmm what similarities do i have with the dolphin <laughs> maybe you like to be sneaky Maybe you like to do different things because dolphins are like that too. But one thing that we have in common is that we're both mammals. They're a marine mammal. We're a land mammal, a mammal mammal. Hmm. Um, we can also go into the water. Are we also a marine mammal? Hmm. Things to think about. Um, but dolphins are mammals. So just like us, they have to breathe air. You're welcome for that nice breath. So they have to breathe air. They also have hair. However, do you see any dolphin with beautiful hair here? Have you ever seen a picture of dolphin with a full set of hair that's like, hello? No, right? So when dolphins are born, they are born with little mustaches though, which don't think it's like a full mustache that's beautiful and long. It's just a little couple hairs. And then as they get a little older, those little mustaches will fall off. But they also have hair. Have you ever seen a dolphin come out of an egg? No. Do we come out of eggs? No. How are we born? We're born from our moms, right? It's live birth. Dolphins will have that same thing. When they're babies, they'll also drink their mom's milk. And then the last one that we all, that we both share is that we're warm-blooded. So that's the five things we really have in common with dolphins. I'm pretty sure there's a lot more too, depending on how you are and how your personality is. You might overlap with dolphins in different ways. Um, but they are pretty playful animals and they're really, really smart. They're really good at being able to capture their food and working together in their pods. So it would be really strange to see one dolphin on its own, depending on what type of dolphin it is. Um, most of them do like to hang out in pods. So in groups of at least 10 to 15, there's also some things known as super pods. And those are thousands of dolphins that like to hang out all together um, in just giant groups. So when you see them in those giant groups, sometimes they're active and working together and trying to get food. Other times they're sleeping, which I thought was really interesting when I learned about this, um, is that dolphins, they don't stop swimming when they sleep. So they'll go to sleep, but then some of the more... I'm trying to think, in charge dolphins will stay awake and they'll be on the outside of the group, kind of like corralling cows is how you can think about it. So these leading dolphins will be on the outside of the group and they'll just be guiding the way and making sure all those sleeping dolphins stay together. And then it's like they'll take different shifts. They're like, okay, my day of work is done. I go to sleep and when another dolphin comes and takes its place. And that's how they're all able to rest and alternate, um, which I think is really, really fascinating. And here in this video, you can see some of the dolphins that are swimming about um, and they'll come up, they'll get that air, which you'll see from some of the other dolphins. But you can see there's even dolphins underwater that don't come up at the surface all at the same time. So if you ever get the chance to go see dolphins out in the ocean or anything like that, there's definitely a lot more dolphins in the water than what you're seeing at the surface all at once. Okay, friends, it seems like we're all out of time. So I just want to go ahead and review some of the letters that we did today. So we started off with our letter A with our anemone, which what sound did the letter A make? Uh, uh, uh. Then we did our letter B with our blue-throated macaw, Benny, which made the sound ba, ba, ba. Then we did the letter C with our crabs, which makes the letter k, k, k. 
the sound, sorry. And then we did her letter D with our dolphins that made the sound duh, duh, duh. So those are our four letters that we did today. But definitely feel free to keep exploring friends. Try to think of different animals that start with different sounds. We also have our, our worksheets right now on our website. So if you were to go onto the Aquarium of the Pacific's website and go through our Summer Kids Club over to this page that is our alphabet page you can find a worksheet where you can keep practicing your letters you can write different animals um that fall under different letters you can draw different animals and try to see if you can figure out the rest of the alphabet with more letters whether it be from ocean animals to land animals with that being said thank you so much friends for the rest of the week we will be having our summer kids club we also have uh two more programs today at 10 a.m which is our way program and then at 11 a.m which is a coral reef program if you want to tune in for either of those but for now goodbye gem and jellies we will see you tomorrow bye